This is a video on the structural health monitoring of steel. I'm Robert Begar, Brandon Bobry, and Nate Flobel. I'll give you a quick overview of what we're going to cover. We're going to go over the, stru uh, the, I'm sorry, the structural health monitoring of structures and how they utilize sensors and software. Uh, we're going to talk about how the sensors and software actively monitor stresses and strains and other components of the building. And because you can m monitor these actively, you can actually detect problems before they occur. And these applications are used in a wide variety of industries. We'll go into a little more detail about that as we go along. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the sensor system. Uh, this is a picture of one of the sensors. Basically, uh, there's different types of sensors that can be used. Uh, you can monitor strain, stress, temperature, deflection, and movement. And all of those, uh, the data that you collect through the sensors goes back through a data processing system. Uh, there's different types of sensors uh, to monitor different things. There's fiber optic sensors, uh, piezoelectric sensors, thermocouples, accelerometers, and strain gauges. It really depends on what you want to evaluate and what you want to monitor over time. And once again, this is going to monitor the structure, the health structure of the building so you know how the members, structural members are behaving and if there's any problems that need to be addressed. Uh, some limitations on structural health monitoring. The, the main one is the cost. It's estimated that for a tall building it generally costs about $5,000 per sensing channel. Uh, if this isn't considered in the initial cost of the project, it can hinder the performance of the structural health monitoring system. Uh, another limitation is the uh, optimization of sensor placement. Uh, you have to have the sensors placed in the right spot. You really have to know what you're doing um, and where the data that you want to collect is going to be uh, collected the, the best, where the best location for that is. Um, because if you don't know that, you're going to put sensors where they don't need to be and you're not going to get good data. Placing the sensors may extend the time required to complete the project and the cost is it sort of goes back to the time as well. The more time, the more it's going to cost you. Some of the advantages of a structural health monitoring system is it increases the lifespan and safety, identifies problem areas and weak spots, reduces maintenance costs, and reduces uh, manual labor for inspection. Uh, being able to identify problems that can prevent the structure from failing catastrophically and it can improve the safety of the structure. Uh, identifying weak spots and problem areas just prevents you know, a member from yielding or fracturing or buckling, etc. And in turn will reduce uh, future repair costs. In larger buildings, the, the cost of labor to inspect the building failure is dramatically decreased with a good structural health monitoring system. Uh, some consequences of not monitoring uh, structural steel is uh, like this T-shape. Uh, if a structural health monitoring system would have been installed, you could have detected that the member was yielding or that this member uh, has, a, has a fracture. Also, uh, you could detect uh, fatigue in, in this member, which caused the uh, the, the flange to wear thin and then the, the flange to crack. One case study that was looked over in particular was the Vernon Avenue Bridge. This is a three span continuous steel girder bridge with a composite reinforced concrete deck. And the interesting thing about this bridge is it implements a structural health monitoring system. And this was possible due to a grant from the National Science Foundation and the data collected will be used to help civil engineers refine how future bridges are designed and monitored. The Vernon Avenue Bridge Structural Health Monitoring System includes 100 strain gauges, 36 steel thermistors, 30 concrete thermistors, 16 biaxial tilt meters, 16 uniaxial accelerometers, and two pressure plates to determine vehicle weights. And pictured on the right is a strain gauge that was used on one of the members of the bridge. For the Vernon Avenue Bridge, sensors and gauges were installed during the construction process and interestingly enough, some of the sensors were installed on members before they made it to the job site at the steel mill. This greatly reduced the time it took to install the sensors because they were pre-made on the members and they did not have to install them once they got to the field. And in conclusion, structural health monitoring systems use is on the rise. And as technology increases, the cost and difficulty of installation becomes greatly decreased, and the ability to constantly monitor structures greatly increases safety and longevity of a project. And so that's the video on health monitoring structural systems. So we hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something from it.